my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. The coronavirus pandemic is causing, has been causing many difficulties, big and small. And we can begin our prayer today as, as we've probably been doing every day for a number of weeks now. Um, we pray for those who are infected. We pray for those who have died. And most importantly, we pray that, that all of us, whatever our circumstances have been, that we get closer to our Lord, that we discover what is truly important, which is Him, that we discover the one thing truly necessary, Jesus Himself. And yes, there have been many difficulties, um, big ones, and also smaller ones, um, ones that that uh, that perhaps all of us, one way or another, have had to endure. Changes in lifestyle, changes changes in life habits, habits which may last or not. I guess it depends. Um, but recently there was a video which maybe you've already seen, um, but there's a video that made its way to my to my inbox, which has become quite popular, and it's a video of a little girl who is crying, and she is clearly not pleased, and at first you're, you're not sure why she's crying, until, until her mother says, honey, where else would you like to eat? And she manages to say, nowhere else. She's clearly frustrated by the situation and this particular difficulty that has come up. And um, then mom goes on to remind her that there are other restaurants that, that in fact this little girl likes to eat at. And that happened to be closed because of the pandemic. She says, honey, Nando's is closed as well. And the poor girl just starts to cry even more and then mom adds on a couple other restaurants that this girl loves but are also closed kfc mcdonald's and upon hearing those two restaurants the poor girl wails and then she manages to control herself and then she looks at her mother and asks very seriously are chinese restaurants closed too yes chinese restaurants are also closed And then in desperation, she asks, what about deliveries? And in the video, you don't hear anything. You you don't hear anything from the mother. But but judging from the reaction from the girl, it must have been a no. Um, And I would say here, this I'm not sure because I don't know where this video is from. But this might have been a little bit of a fib. Um, At least where I am, there are still a lot of deliveries. But maybe in that particular place there aren't. Anyway, um, when she finds out that there are no chances of deliveries, then she she really starts to cry. (laughs) And then mom says, you've literally got to eat mommy's cooking now. And the poor girl will not be consoled. So, okay, this poor girl is used to eating out, used to eating all different kinds of comfort food. Or, and to be honest, a lot of those restaurants I personally like a lot. Um, and she's distressed about it. She, she seems to have lost her peace. And this humorous anecdote, at least to us, uh, perhaps not to the little girl, um, can help us think and relate to some of the more serious difficulties that one may be going through right now. Difficulties where we have experienced a real lack of peace. Difficulties which we compare, we could compare, but I think I would say probably pale in comparison, but we could compare to the mood 
of the apostles following the crucifixion and death of Jesus. It must have been brutal, right? The one for whom you had dropped everything and followed, the one whom you believed to be the Messiah, the Son of God, and who had done so many amazing things, so many miracles, and had such a beautiful message and a way of life. He, he had died. He had died one of the most shameful deaths possible, too. And, and thanks to the betrayal of one of his own. So for the apostles and for all of the disciples, perhaps except Mary, our mother, and, and, and it seems like there's a little bit of hope to Mary Magdalene because they went to the tomb. I mean, they weren't looking to see if Jesus had risen from the dead, but, but there was something that made them go even though they knew that there was a big rock in front of the tomb and they couldn't move it, something made them go. Anyway, but for for almost everybody, hope had been lost. Like, definitively lost. A real time for despair. And Jesus, with his resurrection, appears to them. He wants to give them peace. He wants to let them know that he has conquered death. Now, it doesn't mean that there won't be difficulties in the future, suffering, persecution, death. But in the end, Christ is conquered. So I'm sorry, Christ is conquered. And he awaits us in heaven. In, in the Gospels, we read that he visits the apostles where they are hiding. He stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do, you, why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you can see I have. Jesus appears to them. He seeks them out. And he says, peace be with you. Do not be troubled. Yes, the persecution against Christians will continue. The, the difficulties will continue. But he's with them. That's the key. That is peace. He is peace. With a capital P. So Jesus, be close to me. We ask you to give us your peace. It's a beautiful prayer. It's a prayer that we could pray all the time. But the peace of Christ comes at a price. And what is that price, you might ask? The price is doing his will. So Jesus, give me your peace. And give me the grace to know and to do your will today. To try to accept your love and to accept the cross if you send it my way. But that's the key to be focused on Jesus, to seek him out in the midst of the waves. There's an amazing scene. St. Peter and the other apostles are at sea in rough water at night. And Jesus comes walking on the water. And St. Peter says, If it is you, Lord, tell me to come out on the water. And our Lord tells him to come. And he walks on the water. St. Peter is walking on the water. Until until he stops focusing on Jesus. And he focuses on the waves. He focuses on, wow, it's pretty dangerous out here. And he stops focusing on Jesus. And he panics. And he starts to sink. Because he stopped looking at Jesus. May we always look at Jesus. In the good and in the not so good. He is always by our side. And we see him, even though we may not see him Physically, we see him with the eyes of faith. Faith in him who said that he would not leave us orphans. He would not leave us alone. So in those moments of difficulty, let us keep the eyes on the prize. And that's Jesus. By praying every day, in good weather and in bad, in good times and in not so good times, to pray. And in that prayer, we will ask him and he will give it to us. We will ask him, his grace to do his will 
and we will ask him for his peace, and he will give it to us. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.